I hope you are all well. This week we're going to look at iron. It is a topic many of you said you were deficient in. And so we have put together this information to try and show you how nutrition could help you. Hasna's curry that she cooked on Monday was packed full of iron from the beef that she used. Today I'm going to cook for you a spinach pe pasty which also has lots of iron. Once again, please share your thoughts and comments on the WhatsApp group. So today we will start by looking at the role that iron plays in our body. Then we will look at the deficiency and its symptoms. Following this, we will assess how much we need before looking at some good food sources of iron. Iron is hugely important for our blood. Its role is significant as it helps with the distribution of oxygen. It also helps to keep our immune system healthy. It can help with concentration. It helps to reduce fatigue and can also help to restore sleep. There are some groups of people who are more at risk of deficiency than others. These are infants, toddlers and adolescents due to their rapid growth and young girls when they begin menstruating also require more iron. As you can see the amount of iron we need changes as we grow older. In young women we need about 15 milligrams a day. For pregnant women their need increases dramatically to 30 milligrams and for older women those over 50 or 60 require only 10 milligrams per day. There are some other groups who may be at risk of deficiency. It is those people who drink a lot of tea as the tannin limits absorption. Similarly, people who follow a very high fibre diet may also be at risk of deficiency as the fibre also can act as an inhibitor to absorption. Let's now look at some of the symptoms of deficiency. Though many of these may be due to other problems, they tend to include headaches, dizziness and persistent fatigue. Pale skin or a slight yellowing of the skin may also be a sign of iron deficiency. The major consequence from a lack of iron in your system is anemia. Red blood cells contain a substance called haemoglobin which transports oxygen around your body. The amount of oxygen that's delivered to your body's tissues depends on the number of red blood cells you have and how well they work. It may be caused by an absorption problem or due to high loss of blood. If you are concerned, then you should speak to your doctor. So where can we get iron from? Broadly speaking, iron can be split into two groups. These are from animal sources and from plant sources. Heme iron, from food animal sources, is more readily and easily absorbed by our body, though plant sources offer a good alternative if you don't eat meat or shellfish. So eggs, red meat, the redder the better, and liver or offal are the best sources of iron. Shellfish, such as clams or oysters, are also a good source, as are chickpeas, fortified breakfast cereals, pumpkin seeds, soybeans, black beans, lentils and spinach and lastly sesame seeds. To make sure you get the most iron out of non-heme sources or those vegan sources, then consuming vitamin C will undoubtedly help with absorption of iron by your body. So for today's cooking demonstration, I'm going to cook for you a delicious spiced spinach pasty, which is full of iron from the spinach.
For today's weight management focus, I'd like you to think about mindful eating. Be mindful of everything you eat. Enjoy your food. Think about what you're eating and why. Think about its tastes, its textures. Make the most of your meals. That way you can really enjoy it and think about the food to a greater extent. Thank you for watching today. I hope you found the session fun and informative. Please do let us know what you think. We love hearing all your thoughts and comments. Until next week, take care and goodbye.